Welcome everyone to the Mapped Out Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Patterson, with my buddy, Michael Schmansky. Let's get this podcast started. Michael, how are you today? I'm great. <laughs> he, he is dying of laughter because we have had so many debates over our intro, and <laughs> apparently I just can't keep, <laughs> I can't do it right, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You're right. Okay. Yeah, I'm what good, are we? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about today, Michael? Uh, we're talking about um, sourcing information from uh, reliable sources that are um, not trash. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, but before we get into that, you know what we have to do? We have to ask you all, please share the show if you like what we're doing. Please. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your dog. We don't really care. At least somebody. Um, that's how the show grows, and you guys have been doing a pretty good job at that, so thank you. So now, let's dive into the short episode that we have for you today, and we are going to be talking about sources, right? And, and I will give you um, a spoiler alert, okay? Instagram, probably not your number one <laughs> place <laughs> to get fitness advice. Um, you can get really good advice there, but Michael, let's hear some of your tips for looking for sourcing sources. Cannot talk. All right. So, as for everything, um, sources kind of follow this uh, form of structure. So, like primary, secondary sources, you probably heard of. Um, secondary sources being like videos. Um, review articles, meta-analyses, uh, primary sources coming from literature, and you know first-hand accounts, okay. anecdotal evidence, and such. Um, so, for quick information, uh, if you like need to go somewhere, or, like you want to find out fast, I actually go to YouTube most often. Um, but I've narrowed down like people who actually um, know what they're talking about so like people uh for instance who take scientific information and then condense it down so that i don't have because i don't have all the time to like read all yeah. this literature all the time so people who like are scientific minded rather than uh purely antidotal and i, I think you you made a good point there they condense literature down they don't just use their body as an excuse for or I should say this, they don't use their body as um, a resume, basically. Because what I see a lot of people who don't know what they're talking about, but are jacked because of genetics or, you know, they're taking, you know, supplements, um, we'll say. And, and even then, they or they, they hear that, okay, this is what I need to take, and they don't really know the reasons why. But then they get on YouTube and they start talking about, um, you know, you need to take enter X, Y, Z when maybe somebody doesn't need that, but they hear from influencers like, hey, this person's jacked and they're taking it, so that's what I need to do. And really it's the people who go look at evidence, go look at scientific studies, and then condense it down and give their sources, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, even better if they um, talk about what they're doing and then implement the science within that, it kind of supports what they're doing rather gotcha. than just uh, what they think is right. Gotcha. Have you, so outside of us seeking advice, have you ever been just given advice at the gym? I know this is, have you, have you? Uh, no. Really? No, I don't, not really, no, no. See, maybe. Usually people ask me for advice. Okay. <laughs> and and then like originally I was not in a place to give it either because mm -mm. I barely knew anything. And you, rec did you recognize that you didn't know what you, like, uh, or, or did yes, you? Yes, I did. And that's why I immediately actually try to educate myself as fast as I could on everything so I could provide accurate information. Because teaching is honestly way harder than understanding it yourself. Yeah, it's actually the, the highest, um, the highest uh, degree of learned information is when it's tiered is teaching it to someone else who doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, because when, and I think that's also like when I really started to notice, oh, there's, there's levels to knowledge, right? especially when it comes to the fitness game, like you can know your basics. Okay, what do these exercises do? Um, what muscles do they work, et cetera? Now, why are they good over other exercises? And then from then on, okay, when it comes to the muscles, 
how do they actually work and what how can we improve that and then it led down a dark road and then i met you and then it all just went really down a dark road so um when it comes to recognizing it we've kind of covered a little bit about the youtube and online sources right when it comes to knowing who to take advice from kind of in person or what to look for do you have any suggestions there um i really like derek from more place more dates he's just uh really intelligent and well versed um and he's scientifically backed because um there's not many videos about him disproving what he says Mm -hmm. and he also has scientists on his show that when he presents a subject he talks about it first and they agree with him first and don't really add much to the conversation which yeah. is a good sign oh wait you, don't, you mean dr road <laughs> dr joe rogan <laughs> isn't on your top of the <laughs> list no no not really there are a couple of, of his yes though that i would say mm -hmm. like derek was on there yeah. um disclaimer i do use uh gorilla mode which is derek's product mm -hmm. um and Same. so i trust him yep. and I, I actually have like there's been a lot of information that i've gained from just his short episodes yeah. where um, I'll, I'll go, oh, okay, this is interesting, especially when it comes to um, hormones and how our body regulates certain systems. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of gone down that rabbit hole. Um, but as far as, you know, exercises, right, and I want to talk about programming real quick. Um, you can learn, right, about the body and stuff. When it comes to programming, I see that there's a lot of dumb programs. What do you say about programming and advice for programming? Um, I think you have to recognize that there's naturally two physiological states in the in the human body, and that is um, anabolic states and catabolic states. Um, anabolic m meaning building and catabolic meaning destroying. I feel like I've read a term mm -hmm. um, in time. Uh, so <laughs> uh, lots of these programs uh, only recognize – one um, variant of this physiological condition, yet what they're promoting is one side only, which is catabolic, not anabolic, which is what they want, actually. And that is in terms of working out every single day. Tearing tissue. Not having rest days. Yep. Training muscles repeatedly within an uh, hour period that's not um, recoverable, for instance. Uh, so, like, training the same body part, let's say, uh, the next day or like training a body part that may not directly use the muscle you used yesterday, but still uses it. An For instance, like yeah. uh, training arms and a chest or chest and a, um, arms in a way, because there's some movement. Or that. back and arms too, because yeah. your yeah. biceps. Um, so like exactly. overtraining is very common. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually works out in the favor of most of these uh, awful trainers because um, the people are burning so many calories that they can actually get ripped, but they don't get bigger, and they also are very depleted, at least mentally and uh, uh, physically too, because of just being tired all the time um, and complaining that they're just not making progress, possibly. Yeah, and here's disclaimer. So I work, I don't know why this is a disclaimer. I work out seven days a week. How I structure it is I usually do, um, I think it's shoulders on Monday, Tuesday is um, legs. Wednesday is a rest day slash, well, I say rest day. It usually means I go for like a long walk, relaxing day, I should say, and a sauna treatment, right? Get that recovery going. Then Thursday and Friday are chest and back. And then the weekend, the weekend is what I like to call fun, where it's um, cardio, because I actually like doing cardio and saunas and more of low impact not trying to tear apart muscles but rather just keep moving keep the blood flow going and get ready for that next week mentally and to be able to take on those challenges next week that's at least that's how i work um do you what do you do um so at least for right now yeah it depends on the mesocycle um, and, and same thing for me too i switch it up yeah. quite often yeah so like every um eight weeks i change usually um so the eight week period that i just got done with was a sprinters program so it was focused on you know, olympic lifts explosive lifting okay uh triphasic training so eccentrics isometrics and concentrics 
Um, and that was eight week program, so lots of sprinting and stuff like that. Uh, not really bodybuilding or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and this uh, specific meso cycle, which will be until summer, I'm gonna be doing power building. So that's a four four day a week program that I have. Um, and that's mainly focused on the three f- compound lifts um, and then also more bodybuilding work. And basically what I'm trying to do is that at a certain point, your muscle fibers, they recruit and produce power. Um, but at some point, specifically at the end of my muscle cycle for sprinting, um, you level out at what your muscle can produce in power. Okay. Um, so one way of working around that is to produce, well, to, to grow more muscle fibers and then hope that in doing another uh, phase of that, you know, explosive training that those fibers will also activate and it's a compounding type of, type of factor. Um, so then you have, uh, hopefully a faster and stronger person. Gotcha. So yeah, it's a four days a week, um, based on my schedule, I'm very limited. So I do Tuesday and then, uh, I do, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and then I take Saturday, Sunday off and then Monday off also. And then Wednesday off. Oh, okay. So it, big rest. It's ca- yeah, guys, it's, ca- big rest. it's yeah. it's really weird. Um, so it's Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, so then and then and Sunday, Monday, uh, so and Wednesday. Right? So on your off days, are you actually um taking those off, or are you like just doing like low impact exercises, or um, you know, like what does your cycle look like for off days? Yeah, for off days, nothing, doing nothing. Uh, usually, actually, I just do stretching. So like yoga, I do yoga every okay. day. So I guess that's kind of important to mention. <laughs> I no, do I do yoga every and, day. And yoga is hard. Yeah, I've yeah. started I've started doing it too, just yeah. because it's actually a really good stretcher, mm-hmm. and it, it it's really relaxing. Yeah, yeah. Um, to just take a moment and you know just kind of have your own space. Mm-hmm. You want to call it that? Um, it's it's way harder than what it seems. Yeah. So I do that also, and that's kind of uh, promoting strength in length, as I like to say it. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to edit. No, I'm kidding. Because no. no, uh, <laughs> most people just stretch and stretch and stretch, but they actually become more injury prone because they're not strong in the mo- range of motion. Mm-hmm. Completely. So, strength and length. <laughs> Remember. So, now now that we <laughs> – strength that'll be the title, just, strength and length. It's just automatic. <laughs> um, still is. Uh, yeah. so, okay. So, now that we got the – okay, on your rest day, okay, what do you – like when it comes to nutrition – what are you how are you eating are you eat are you tossing down the old donuts are you stuffing your face full of uh what's an unhealthy food cake uh fried chicken etc oreos oreo actually oreos that's my bomb <laughs> that gets me jolly ranchers have been my my thing lately so transitioning from programming to nutrition right these short episodes um we <laughs> we have a uh a fad going on right now um, that's sweeping the nation, and it is called Athletic Greens. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and everybody who is an quote-unquote athlete, right, in their basement um, is taking these Athletic Greens apparently on Instagram. And I think that brings up a good point of eat, eat decent. You don't need to eat. Obviously, I think I eat pretty clean. I uh, try not to eat. I watch my sugars and try not to stuff my face full of processed food. But other than that, like I, I feel like I eat pretty normally and I don't really track what I eat um, to a certain extent. I think I do it habitually at this point. But as far as um, unneeded um, unneeded supplements, shall we say, or unneeded uh, nutrition, um, wh- what are some of the <laughs> fads or uh, – opinions that you might have on on that subject yeah so generally most people in training programs under eat that's always the case even in sports especially sports when you're active in sports high level sports always it's it's always under under eating eating. yeah because uh you can see a rise in injuries specifically in long-term seasons yeah um you can see it in uh mineral um scores in bones um so you're getting you know uh, weak bones, for lack of a better term. Um, you're, you're not getting the nutrients that you need to supplement that. Yeah, and uh, just 
also like maintaining low body fat, like really low. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean you're healthy, you know. Yeah. Um, especially for sports again. Um, for instance, football players. Uh, most of them don't look ripped, and there's a reason for that because <laughs> fat provides cushioning. Um, and subcutaneous fat provides cushioning in your joints, around your joints. Um, it, pr- it pr- prevents against high impact, you know, mm-hmm. um, events. Um, and another high impact event that may be common to people is training. So maybe, um, rather than getting that, that 1% body fat goal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which uh, I think you I should focus on that. like, uh, proficiency in movements and whatever provides that proficiency the best. And that may be a higher body fat, um, within like, you know, 10 to 12 percent or 10 to 15 percent i think that's a good range Mm -hmm. to be honest um and then like when that proficiency is not required as much aka like summertime or like what you're preparing for so like you're lifting for a reason hopefully like maybe it's to look good okay that proficiency of building muscles and stressing the muscles efficiently may be better in a situation where you can withhold more weight and that maybe be at a higher body fat. Um, but do you need to build more muscle if you've already hit your maximum peak at summertime? Maybe not. So you don't need that high, perf- high performance proficiency. So you can drop your t- single digit body fat um, for that period of time. And, and also with that too. So I know we're talking about people who are probably in decent shape going into that next level. If you are obese, right? Um, and you have excess body fat and you're trying to um, slim down and you see all these fads out there about you need to supplement with X and Y and Z. And next thing you know, this diet that you, I shouldn't say diet, because I hate the word diet. So I feel like that has a short-term connotation to it, and you're always going to return to your habits, and so I never want to say diet. When it comes to your nutrition, right, and you hear all of these people on Instagram, all these fit people going, enter X, Y, and Z, you need this. Um, what advice or strategies do you have for them as far as that? Because at least what I like to say is take a couple of your habits you know are not the best and make them better. And, for example, soda to water, right? Just drink more water. A lot of times <laughs> if you cut soda, you know, a couple of cans of soda, that's 300 calories right there. Plus, you know, maybe you rather than eating the donut, you just don't eat anything or you know, you you lay off the mayo on the sandwich or, or just small stuff, and slowly those will build up into bigger habits. What advice do you have? Um, well, what I have found for people who are, you know, um, semi-obese to obese is that there's things you can leverage your system physiologically-wise. Um, for instance, slowing down eating. Um, by slowing down your eating uh, time, um, the amount of time it takes you to finish a meal, um, mm-hmm. you can allow your gut to stretch. Okay. Um, and that stretch mechanism is what ca- what signals to your brain to release leptin, which is uh, a hormone that suppresses um, the behavior of wanting to eat more. So if you just slow down your eating and actually like uh, chew your food and not just throw it down, <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> then at um, that. then you'll find that you're just not you're you're satisfied. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're satisfied that also, faster. That comes along with eating uh, nutrient dense foods. Yeah. Because um, if you're not eating nutrient dense foods, it doesn't really matter how fast, at least in my instance, how fast you slow down or how slow you eat. Yeah. Because there's not really many nutrients in it anyway. So that entire box of cereal is gone. Um, whether you notice it or not in that two hour movie mm-hmm. you're watching it, for instance, <laughs> uh, YouTube series. Yep. Um, and then another thing would be, uh, like you said, uh, you know, cutting out things that may not seem as though they're providing uh, instances for gaining weight, uh, such as soda. Mm-hmm. Um, so just start like, sort of like, be more, uh, um, more attentive. attentive. Yeah, more yeah. attentive to the calories on things that you're eating regularly. Um, and then another thing would be, uh, this is interesting. If you're at dinner, for instance, or lunch, mm-hmm. um, ask for a takeout box when you get your meal. And immediately put half of your meal into the takeout box. And what you'll find is that if you eat that, that large size meal, because it's American meal, so it's pretty mm. large, oh, yeah, always yeah. large. 
um, what you'll find is that when you eat that smaller sized um, halved meal, um, you'll actually be satisfied most of the time. And if you wait, again, wait for the gut to initiate the response. Mm-hmm. If you wait, then you won't, won't you you won't have a, a hunger for that other half, and then you can have that later. Yeah, and um, that takes up two of your meals, right? Exactly, yeah. and and they're two things that you like. Yeah, if you order it, and they were guessing. delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's just another strategy. Um, and then like we can go on to like you know other things that I've been doing. For instance, like um, sometimes when you're hungry, you're not actually hungry, you're just thirsty, um, or you're deficient in sodium. Get a little so water. I get a little salt. Yeah, so I have I have some I have salt water in the morning, for instance, um, or just um, drinking um, different teas or coffees because those are caffeinated, mm-hmm. but make sure they're not packed with calories. Yeah, um, and those things will uh, suppress your appetite too. Um, but also, don't get into a cycle of binging either. Manage your appetite well, so you know allot yourself a window to eat, um, and eat well in that window. Um, don't like, you know, starve your crash diet and then just binge out. Yeah. Just binge out. Cause a lot, that just happens a lot. And so. typically when you binge, you're not focused on the nutrition of that food and you're just yeah. worried about intaking whatever you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's also not very good. Yeah. Um, and I, I really think to kind of wrap this up, cause this is more of a shorter episode. I think a good way to look at all of this is to say, I have a goal, right? And, and I want to get to xyz and i realize that it's not going to be an instant change however if you take a step back um relax and say okay what's the best way that i can do what's the best way that i can get to this goal and you start once again looking at the sources that we mentioned looking at how you can um learn from those people and then learn about what you need as far as nutrition and programming I think that's the fastest way to get to your goal. You have any closing remarks? Um, also, when you're like in a uh, an instance when you're eating or training, make it more about the social aspect about it too. You know, completely. Um, because some of these processes can be totally individualistic at times. Mm-hmm. And uh, one way to stick close to these goals is to make it social, bring in the social aspect, because then you are also held accountable um, indirectly but also maybe directly if you pick up a training partner or someone you have a meal with, you know, they'll pick up on your habits and then maybe keep you in track. Completely. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this short episode. If you like the show, please share it. And we will see you all next week.